Holloman joins the lonely struggle of Diane Fossey to gain oh closer God. understanding of the mountain gorilla's world. Oh, my God. Oh. Easy. Easy, easy. In the remote highlands of Rwanda, Central Africa, eight lofty volcanoes make up the Virunga Range. Its misty slopes have become the last stronghold for one of the world's rarest mammals, the wild mountain gorilla. The total world population of these gorillas is now just 214. Man knew next to nothing about his closest animal relative until in 1968, a courageous scientist, Diane Fossey, began to penetrate the gorilla's world. Diane learned to imitate their feeding and grooming habits and even to make similar sounds until gradually she was accepted by the gorillas as kind of a long lost cousin. One of her favorites was Digit, completely at ease in her presence. But this hard won camaraderie was shattered last year when Digit was killed by poachers. Since then, Diane has fought back. She formed poacher patrols whose members try to protect the gorillas. The poachers infest the woods with traps to snare an antelope called the diker, whose meat is sold to Europeans on the black market. Sometimes unwittingly, a gorilla becomes caught in a snare. And so the poacher patrols attempt to cut away these illegal traps before that can happen. Despite official responsibility for this park shared by Zaire, Uganda, and Rwanda, Diana's fought the battle against poachers on her own. Today, she's joined by a man who has followed her work with interest and concern, Earl Holloman. I came to visit Diane because of reports that the situation here is critical. After Digit was killed, an entire study group of gorillas was wiped out by poachers. At the same time, because of ill health incurred over 13 years in this high, severe climate, Diane herself was leaving. The mountain gorillas were losing their most important ally. And this was the last chance to see her among them. It marks the boundary between Rwanda and Zaire. And so in the process, we're going into Zaire. Really? Leaving Rwanda. It comes from the crater of the Soki. It's a beautiful crater lake. It's 400 feet in diameter. Gorillas seem intimidated by any animal taller than they are. So to approach them, we crouch down in a less threatening posture. A gorilla can weigh more than 400 pounds and his arms can span eight feet. Diane had told me that beneath their fierce appearance, they have a shy and gentle nature. But it was hard to avoid apprehension, especially since I still couldn't see them. moved into the open and I saw the silverback size. I hoped Diane was kidding. Oh, that's Shinda. Icarus, who was second in command of the group, seemed very tolerant of his little brother Shinda. It's uh, They just made the door of the silverback, that's all. He's the focus of every group. <laughs>
The next day, before going back out in the rainforest, Diane gave out necessary clothing to members of the poacher patrol. It made me realize that her studies of the gorilla were constantly being interrupted by the sad need to try to save them. They go out every week, or every 10 days, for three days at a time. And they work the different areas where we figure there are traps or where we know there are traps. And their, their job only is to cut traps. Who pays these men? Well, the Digit Fund I started in America. It's in connection now with the African Wildlife Leadership Foundation. And from the American public, we've gotten the money uh, for their stuff. Each man for three days earns the equivalent of $10. About three, three, 30 a day, $3.30 a day each. Uh-huh. So it's not that expensive. Wouldn't it be better if somebody went out every day? <laughs> I don't have the funding. Dan, this research center of yours is right in the middle of an international park. I mean, aren't all the animals here protected? Legally protected? Theoretically, they're supposed to be protected. You kind of had to take the law into your own hands in a way, haven't you, in order to make this work? I mean, I heard that some of the people in the State Department in the United States, as well as uh, certainly some of the officials in the Rwandan government, would like to see Diane Fossey leave this mountain. Why is that? Well, I'm not here to make friends. Um, I'm here for, for, I came here essentially for research. And I don't believe that you can close your eyes or close your mind <clears throat> to the problems of conservation. And if there's something as simple as these patrols, which only go out and cut traps, if there's something that simple that can be done effectively, it's not talking about conservation, it's acting. Conservation begins with the boots on a man's feet. These men are especially attuned to the bush. Each time they go out, they take their lives in their hands. On a patrol the week before, a poacher's poisoned arrow missed Diane by just a few inches. Almost as fast as these men can cut the traps, the poachers set up new ones. The park area is supposedly allotted for the gorilla survival, but Diane's unsanctioned patrols offer the main resistance to these dangerous snares. Later that day, I was taken to visit the gorillas again by Peter Fight, one of Diane's students. In each group, a silverback reigns without question over an average of 13 members. There's Effie again. Make sure that your movements are very slow. Like lifting up a camera and putting it down. You don't touch them, right? No, you don't touch the animals. Mm -hmm. um, some of these animals have lost all fear of human beings. This was scared to death of me. <laughs> this particular one is actually the one that has gotten so used to humans that this one is, it this doesn't one's... even bother you. This is Tuck again. Tuck. This is a mature fe maturing female right here. I assume you don't make any quick motions, right? No, you, uh, you move very slowly. Uh, hey, here comes Icarus. He's showing off. Oh, mm. oh he's just going to crash out. Here we go. Oh. That means I think we're going to be right in the middle of it. They'd love to show off. Oh, here comes... Here comes Tuck again. Tuck. Oh, this is a really amazing contact. Oh, We've got the whole group ahead of us right here. Look at this. Isn't this wild? Oh. Who's got my boots? Easy. Right. Mm -hmm. Easy, easy. He's gonna show off. He's gonna show off again. Hmm. Whenever the two silverbacks get very this. close together, they'll belt vocalize to each other. It comes cut. So you'll look into your camera lens. I hope you have a filter on it, because it yeah. may be destroyed. Well, it does have. Yeah, I guess I have. Yeah. It might be scratched. Behind the ear, actually. <laughs> but one reason I feel that Pablo is, is as habituated as he is. It's because his mother left him when, uh, about a year and a half ago. What? And I, seek, I think he seeks the attention of observers and other animals. Effie has a tendency to stay really close to Beethoven now. And I'm sure she'll stick with him for at least the first year of the birth of the new kid. It's amazing how gentle these creatures are. I think we might be able to move in a little closer. Diane calls the gorillas introverted, peaceful vegetarians who become aggressive only out of protection or as a way of bluffing. 